Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? So, I have a revelation coming from Holy Spirit. This revelation is coming from the number 1018. And what's attached to the number 1018 is to act as an umpire. To act as an umpire. And another phrase that goes with to act as an empire is making the call. Okay, making the call. So for someone to act as an umpire or to make the call means that this person has the authority to make a final decision when it comes to a conflict between contending forces. So there is someone who is about to make a decision when it comes between a conflict between co contending forces, such as the Father and Satan, 111. There is someone who is about to make a decision. They are about to make the call. They are about to decide, okay? And... The video clip movie that Holy Spirit brought to my attention was from Aladdin. And the scene is entitled, I Choose You. And in this scene, Aladdin, Jasmine, and Jasmine's father and Jeannie is present, are present. And Aladdin has a decision to make whether he is going to keep Genie, which is representing another God, okay, as well, or, and something that can fulfill their wishes, okay? So this is something that's representing another god or or a person that can fulfill their wishes if it's not another god or they could have both they could be worshiping another god and they could have a person that is fulfilling all their wishes however it goes they could be a, a god another god that they fulfill they feel is fulfilling all their wishes and a person that they have made their idol either way there is Something that this person had to get rid of that they idolized, whether it is another God or a person or both. And it had to do with their wishes being fulfilled, why they kept one or both of these things. So Aladdin has a decision to make and he decides to tell Jasmine that he can no longer play this role. 3333. He can no longer play this role. He has to be true to himself. And in that, he decides to let go. He decides to free the genie. Okay, he decides to give genie his freedom instead of getting his wish fulfilled which is for this genie or this god to make him who he desires to be so instead of that he decides to free genie so this person is going to decide to free this god or this person who they feel can fulfill their wishes they are going to decide to release this witchcraft this new age, this other God, this person, whatever it is. And when they do this, the father is going to give this person a choice well the when they when they release this idol 
The Father is going to give you a choice on whether you want to be back with this person once they release this idol. Okay? And again, this person releasing this idol, whether it be a, a lowercase God or a person or both, is them being true to themselves, is them choosing the Father, is them choosing God. So with that being said, the Father is going to give you a choice on whether you want to be back with this person because they chose the Father. So they are choosing you. Okay. And again, this scene is called I Choose You. And I'm going to put it in the comment section. So that you can receive your own revelation from it. But in this decision making. Acting as an umpire. Making the call to release this idol. This decision is going to come with peace from Christ. It is going to come with a wholeness from Christ that he uses to assure and to confirm a believer that they are living in his preferred word. So when this person makes this decision, they will have peace. They will have wholeness. They will be they will feel assured and they will receive confirmation and it will be confirmed. And this will let them know that they are, are walking on the right path, that they are living in God's preferred will for their life. And with that being said, this person to act as an umpire also means to direct, to control, to rule a place of authority. So when this person makes this decision, when they make this call, when they act as an umpire and it comes with peace and wholeness and assurance and confirmation and they choose the father and they choose you and you choose them, that will put this person in a place of authority to be able to direct and control and to govern and to rule. The scripture that's attached to the number 1018 is Acts 20 and 4. This was the same scripture that's attached in the last message that was posted. However, I will reread it. A moment when Paul, this, this um, scripture describes a moment when Paul is not alone. And he is accompanied by several representatives from different churches. These men are delegates, delegates who are traveling with Paul to deliver donations from their churches to the Jerusalem church. The donations are intended to help relieve poverty and unite the world wide fellowship of believers. So the father is saying now is coming a time where you who is representing Paul, someone who is small and humble, is not to be alone. You will be accompanied by a representative known as a delegate. This person will be traveling with you. A delegate is a person sent or authorized to another person. They are entrusted a task and a re responsibility to that person. So the father is saying, this man who has made this decision, made this call, is a delegate that he has entrusted with a task and a responsibility to you. This man will be traveling with you. He, he will be taking this journey with you. And on this journey, he will deliver a donation to you. And a donation is considered to be a gift or a contribution to one who is in need of it. The donations are intended to help relieve poverty and unite um, worldwide for fellowship for believers. So this is also, this union is also going to help unite the people of God. 
Okay, so this union, this marriage coming together is also going to bring more people to the house of God. It's going to cause more to people to become believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The delicate's names mean nourishing, well-fed. Now, this, the, these are the delicates. These are the names of the men who are traveling with their wives on this journey and will deliver a donation to their wives on this journey okay the the names of these men represent nourishing well fed well educated well brought up who defends the father the best prince best ruler excellent ruler second favorable lucky to rejoice at the wedding, the bridegroom is known by this name, Gaius, and it is typically what the husband is referred to. Okay, so the father is just making it clear that this is your husband. This is a time to rejoice. For some of you, this might be your second husband, your second time around with this person. Okay, your second marriage. Did I say that twice? Second. Okay. Favorable. Lucky. Um, God's honor. Casual. Fortunate. And fortunate one. So for some of you, this may happen by chance. You may feel that this happens casually, by chance, unexpectedly. But the Father says, know that you are fortunate and a fortunate one. The second thing that's attached to the number 1018 is, is the word Beth Hastel. And this is a place in Judah. The word origin means house, adjoining together. Micah 111, 12, 12. Micah prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem and Samaria and the, the destruction and the resurrection of the Judean state and rebuked the people of Judea for adultery and dishonesty. Okay, so the father is saying there is a house that he is bringing together. He is joining a house together. There is a house that he is joining to together. These are two people who are to be praised. The father says he has prophesied destruction over those who seem and act as if they are peaceful but they are really watching you and keeping an evil eye out on you but they pretend as if they are peaceful and they come in peace the father has already prophesied destruction against these people he has also prophesied destruction and the restoration of the judean state so the father says he has prophesied the destruction and the resurrection the resurrection Okay, and the restoration of those who are to be praised. So although you were once destroyed, the father says he also prophesied that you would be restored. Okay, that this house would be restored and that it would be joined together. Thus says the Lord. He also prophesied that he would rebuke the people of Judah for adultery and dishonesty. So the father said he also prophesied that he would check and correct this man for idolizing whatever it is that he was idolizing or this woman for idolizing whatever it is that she was idolizing whether it be a lowercase god witchcraft new age or a person that they felt could fulfill their wishes and needs or a god that they felt that could fulfill their wishes and needs or witchcraft or a new age that they felt could fulfill their wishes and needs the father says he has rebuked the one who is to be praised, his child. He has checked and corrected them for this idolization and for this dishonesty. This has all been prophesied. Okay. Um, the name Shafir, which is mentioned in the scripture, Michael 111. Okay. The name Shafir means beautiful. Or is that mentioned in the scripture? However, the name Shafir means beautiful. It means pleasant. 
Michael calls on the inhabitants of Shafir to walk around in shameful and nakedness, which means that that was that which was once beautiful is about to be shameful and dishonorable. So the father is saying those people who claim to be peaceful towards you, who claim to come in peace and were really had an evil eye towards you those people who cause you destruction the father says those people were once walking around and everything was once beautiful and pleasant but the father says he is now calling those people to walk around in shameful and nakedness which means what's once what was once beautiful is now about to be shameful and dishonorable the father is saying he is about to bring shame and dishonor upon those people who brought destruction upon you who watched you with an evil eye through witchcraft and sorceries and came against you like so and acted as if they came in peace the father says he is about to bring shame and dishonor upon these people also this is a warning of God's judgment on the children of Israel, on his people. Okay, this is all taking place so the joining together of this house can take place. So all this judgment is taking place. All this checking and correction is taking place. All this destruction has taken place so that the joining of this house can take place. In this man's decision, there will be peace. There will be assurance. There will be confirmation. There will be wholeness. There will be security without violence and without conflict. There will be un there will th there will not be any unwanted actions, meaning you won't speak to each other how you don't want to be spoken to. Okay, there will be security without violence. You will know how to speak to each other. There will be peace. You will be able to disagree and still be respectful with each other. There will not be any unwanted actions, okay? There will be confidence in the promise that the Father has given you. You will be confident in your husband. You will be confident in your wife. You will be confident in the promise. You will be confident in your marriage. You will be assured. You will have evidence that supports your decision. The father will give you evidence. He will confirm that you are on the right path and that you are walking in his will and in alignment. You will be whole. The state of being unbroken and complete, not divided into parts or separated, but whole, confirmed, assured, and at peace. When you make this decision, if this word is for you, okay, for this man of God. But the father says all of this had to take place. All of this destruction, all of this had to take place in order for this house to come together. Okay, so let's receive fresh scripture from the father together. I am that I am, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Please lead me to where you need me to be, for I know it's through you that all things are possible, and it's in your mighty and glorious name that I pray. Amen. Okay, let me go to where he told me to go. Numbers 23. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars and prepare seven bullocks and seven rams for me here. So he did as Balaam had ordered, offering a bullock and a ram on the altar. And Balak said to him, 
I have erected the seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on each. And Balaam said to him, Stand here by your holocaust while I go over there. Perhaps the Lord will meet me, meet me, and I will tell you whatever he lets and I will tell you whatever he lets me see. He went out on the barren height, and God met him. When he had put an utterance in Balaam's mouth, the Lord said to him, Go back to Balak and speak accordingly. So he went back to Balak, who was standing by his holocaust together with all the princes of Moab. Then Balaam gave a voice to his oracle. So, again, this man, this is confirmation that this man has a decision to make and that he has a call he has to make. Either he is going to do what the father, either he is going to release um, this idol and this idol tree and idolization and he is going to do what the father has told him to do. I hear the, uh, say the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. This is this man's decision. Okay. And this man is going to make a call. He is going to act as an umpire. Okay. And for this message, this man says, I choose you. Okay. He chose God. He chose. And just like in scripture, this man chose God and this man is going to choose God okay so this man has made the call making the call acting as an umpire okay and again with this decision will come peace assurance wholeness and confirmation okay that you are living in God's preferred will so that's the message y'all God is good. Won't he do it every time? Yes, he will. <laughs> Peace.